Welcome to Plant Medicine Transmissions with Javier Regueiro. Welcome back to Plant Medicine Transmissions. My name is Javier Regueiro. Right after recording the last episode of this podcast, I was concerned. I was concerned that uh, this message, this viewpoint that everything is perfect might give some people the justification not to do anything, not to engage in their lives, in their healing and spiritual process by rationalizing it. But this guy told me that everything is perfect and it's not the first time I hear such a thing. I've read about it. I heard about it. So I'm here to speak today about the uniqueness of our individual journeys. And in that uniqueness, I also want to stress the perfection aspect of our individual journeys. As a plant medicine person, I spent a fair bit of time judging others for the way that they would engage in this powerful process, as well as in any other kind of spiritual process. Luckily for me, I was eventually able to let go of such judgments because I realized that I was actually sinning, so to speak, of arrogance, knowing what is best for other people. Finally, a couple of years ago, I realized that that is not my place. It's not my place to judge other people, to judge other plant medicine people, that our individual journeys is so mysterious that no one can really tell to somebody else what to do in order to further their journey. A common judgment in recent years has been uh, the spiritual bypassing aspect of uh, people who fall into the easy trap. They, they've had an amazing peak experience with, say, plant medicine or other mind-altering substances, or as a result of a spiritual practice or spiritual initiation, where they are propelled above and beyond their own psychological and karmic predicament. They have an experience of that perfection of the divinity, the intrinsic divinity of everything and everybody and end up using that party line to avoid actually working on themselves and integrate aspects of themselves that are not nearly as expanded as what they experienced during these peak experiences. I personally don't believe that such an approach is valid in the long run. But because our journey is perfect, and in my opinion, our journey is about awakening. We are all of us, whether we acknowledge it or not, on a spiritual journey of awakening, of realizing within ourselves and everything and everybody else this essential divinity. How that journey unfolds is totally mysterious. And that journey may also include lifetimes of denial and spiritual bypassing. All of it, everything that happens to us is part of our journey. And there is no shortcutting aspects of that journey, even if we choose for whatever reason 
the spiritual bypassing phase, the rationalizing everything and using it as a justification for not going deeper into our journey is also part of that journey of awakening. I am fond of quoting the advertising for a Spanish brand of cigarettes when I was living in Barcelona that had a spiral and said, sometimes we have to get lost in order to find ourselves again. And as I've said before, sometimes we need to hit bottom in order to rise again and continue our journey in meaningful ways. The mysteriousness of our journeys and the fact that at the bottom we are really walking in the dark, not really aware of what awaits us in the future and even what is best for the furthering of that journey means that we will end up in some uh, choppy waters at times. It also means uh, that our confusion is uh, part of our experience and not something that we should resent in any way. Oftentimes, this desire to wake up becomes so strong that is actually an impediment to the furthering of our journey. We are so attached to the pursuit of our goals and sometimes those goals are manipulated by the ego and they really turn into spiritual pursuit that have really nothing spiritual about it. They turn into an ego-oriented pursuit. And that's when the spiritual ego makes its grand entrance in our lives. A solution to this predicament is to actually shift our focus from our desires, even if they are lofty spiritual desires, to our needs, to asking ourselves whenever we feel necessary to do so, and whenever particular when we feel stuck in our process, is to ask ourselves, what do I need right now? To let go for long enough of our desires and to focus on our needs. We live in a society that is all about the pursuit of desires. And we approach our spiritual journey with that same attitude. When in reality, at least as far as I'm concerned, that pursuit is going to continue in meaningful ways when we address and honor our needs most importantly, our emotional and psychological needs. The pursuit of a spiritual life will not address those needs unless we make the effort of addressing them ourselves. I read a while ago that in a Vipassana retreat done some years ago in Asia, with both Asians and Westerners, by the end of it, half of the people, the Westerners, were still struggling with their projections upon the teacher and upon the process of very simple but important psychological issues regarding their relationship with their parents and whatnot. Whereas the Asian crowd was able to make important progress in their meditation practice. This is a predicament that is fairly common among meditators who feel stuck in their practice 
and oftentimes start looking around even into plant medicine in order to get unstuck. That getting unstuck is actually happening because we are finally addressing issues that the meditation practice per se does not address. This is not a shortcoming on the part of, for instance, a meditation practice. But it's important to know that a practice does not necessarily address all aspects of ourselves and all of our needs. So if you were to feel a little stuck in your daily practice, on your regular practice, then it's important, it may be beneficial to look elsewhere in order to address those needs. Now, in our culture, we are all kind of Puritans. We believe that our path ought to be one and only one in many cases. I have witnessed in recent years, particularly by a younger generation, how oftentimes their spiritual path is a mix of different practices and different belief systems. I was initially perplexed by such a mix of practices And now I no longer judge it, but I can see how people may need different practices and uh, teachings at the same time in order to further their journey. In our culture, we also value quantity over quality, and we are all guilty to a degree or another of spiritual consumerism because we are desperately trying to fill that void that we feel inside and the increasing sense of meaninglessness in our lives. But spiritual journey is a very delicate process and looking for shortcuts by engaging in a million different practices is not necessarily what we need and is not necessarily going to help us along our journey. And in some cases, that excess of variety may actually create more confusion. And that is also part of our journey. Another current aspect of uh, spirituality is the belief that we no longer need a teacher that we no longer need a guide and we can just do it on our own. And that includes, for some people, engaging with mind-altering substances and plant medicines of any kind. Now, I'm a very independent person, but uh, in the case of plant medicine, I have benefited immensely by having a formal teacher. My teacher's name is uh, Don Francisco Montes Xunia. He lives outside Iquitos. He's uh, an Amazon native. And when I first decided to be of service to Ayahuasca and later on San Pedro, and I met him, I realized that uh, Don Francisco was the perfect teacher for me because he wasn't interested in creating carbon copies of himself. And a very interesting thing happened when uh, I returned to the jungle and to his center for what was, for me, the beginning of my apprenticeship. We hadn't talked about it at all. But uh, within a few weeks, Don Francisco understood that, that I was there wanting to learn, wanting to apprentice. And at that point, he put me aside and he said, Javier, I am not your teacher. The plants and God are. I am here only to make sure that your process unfolds in a positive way. 
what he said that day was most important for me because on the one hand, it validated my choice of him as a teacher. And at the same time, it made it clear that that learning process was my responsibility and that I was not going to be spoon-fed in my apprenticeship because in traditional societies, the learning apprenticing process unfolds in very different ways than the Western school system, for instance, in that we are not being given pieces of information nonstop, but it's a process of connecting with our own wisdom and our own truths within ourselves. And the dieta and the plant medicine process are there to support that coming to awareness. So I found my teacher's support to be incredibly valuable over the years. And uh, to this day, Don Francisco remains a very important guidance and uh, rock upon which I can rest whenever I feel overwhelmed or confused. So this was my journey, and uh, I recommend it because I found it extremely valuable. And at the same time, I respect the choice of others who may go on these explorations on this part of their journey on their own. In the end, it is not whether we do this by ourselves or under the guidance of somebody else. The important thing is to be aware of the challenges and possibly having somebody, even if it's not a formal teacher, that we can go to in the case of confusion and feeling a little bit lost. When it comes to plant medicine, I also found it very useful to stick to one plant medicine person long enough for my own shadow to come out and uh, to integrate the, my projections. Many people in plant medicine circles, we are still, despite everything that we claim, the expansion and all that, we are easily prone to judgment, to judging, for instance, the plant medicine person who led a ceremony or a dieta for us, when in reality those judgments, however well-founded, are simply part of the process. Somehow we find among thousands of practitioners, we find the person upon whom we can project our own shadow. And that is the most important, as far as I'm concerned, aspect of this process. So staying with the same plant medicine person long enough for that shadow to come out, for our own judgments and projections to come out, is a most important and valuable aspect of this process. And I don't really recommend going from ceremony to ceremony, from circle to circle, because we don't have enough time to dive deeper into that shadow. What we end up doing is we simply keep judging and getting away with that judgment. So the choices that we make in regard also to plant medicine is always perfect. It may not be comfortable, far from it, but it is the perfect choice from a place within ourselves that holds incredible wisdom 
so that our journey can continue. When we finally take responsibility for our own choices and experiences, we can see the perfection of those choices. If we don't see that perfection just yet, then I would invite you to look back at the whole experience and see those aspects that we have resisted and that we have judged and see what kind of further work may be required, what aspects of ourselves we may not have been ready at the time to face and take responsibility for, but that now may be a more ideal time to do that. A very simple way to look at our lives and be able to move beyond the present predicaments is by looking at recurring experiences that clearly show us that among all of those experiences, the one common character was ourselves. It wasn't somebody else. It wasn't something else. It was ourselves. When we have the humility to acknowledge or at least entertain the possibility that we may be the common character in all of these experiences and therefore we may have something to do with it, then uh, a whole different horizon opens up. An horizon of self-responsibility instead of blaming and instead of remaining comfortably disempowered. Last but not least, it's important to take it easy to not force ourselves too much along this or any other path and to acknowledge and honor the fact that our journey is unfolding not necessarily according to our desire, but according to our actual level of readiness of where we are along our path. Say, for instance, for Westerners, as Westerners, we have clearly a very specific psychological makeup that is often about playing out certain soul wounds, most importantly with our parents and families. And this is something that, for instance, many Asian people do not suffer from. It's not part of their journey, at least not in this lifetime. Most Westerners would have a serious issue about getting in front of our parents, kneeling and kissing their feet or asking for their blessings. So those issues are important to address as a Westerner, as part of our heritage, not just cultural, but I would say on a soul level. It's not a coincidence that we may choose a life being born in a Western country because that place will be most conducive to the resurfacing of old soul wounds, to honor where we are rather than stubbornly keeping a focus on a goal, a spiritual goal that we have set for ourselves, is a sign of humility and maturity. And when we let go of our egocentric and spiritual ego's expectations, then we create a space where we can see the perfection of our own journey and each step along that journey. Blessings.